Hi guys, welcome back on the channel. On today's video, we're going to talk about three skirmish games I've been playing for the last couple of years. Uh, skirmish gaming uh, was something I was never fond of. I never tried it. Uh, but usually, the people who know my channel, I have very big armies, 100 years old armies, and I'm playing big battles like Sword Point, um, Hail Caesar, etc. But uh, working uh, in the Middle East and uh, being away and moving quite frequently from project to project, um, this is not easy to bring your miniatures, it's not worth it. So I started collecting individually based miniatures so I can play and start reading and playing the skirmish games. I would say I'm hooked and I'm impressed by the quality of the rules. So before I start, obviously these three skirmish games, never mind the Bill Hooks Deluxe here on the left of your screen, Baron's War in the center and Blood and Crowns on the right, are three skirmish rule sets I've played quite a lot. Baron's War, the armies are getting ready, but I've read it a lot and I had many test games. And um, I enjoy them all. Obviously the king maybe of skirmish games, Lion Rampant is not here, I've never played Lion Rampant, I've never read the rules, I may do, um, they seem to be very popular, so I think uh, most people know what I would be talking about, but in the future for sure I will have a read to see uh, what's so special about these rules. So let's start and see what every rule set has to offer and what are the differences. So let's start with Bill Hooks. Now Bill Hooks Deluxe has an advantage and a very clever move from the author and um, the production team that you're able to fight also quite big battles. It's a skirmish game or you can play skirmish games, big skirmish games, but you can also fight normal battles with uh, um, like Hail Caesar and Sword Point. You use D6 dice, you have cards, you have tokens, you have event cards and um, that's something that I like in a rule set because being a solo player it gives a lot of unpredictability, the draw of the card. You base your movement and actions from your commanders and uh, then you draw cards. The sequence is not um, uh, the same, there is depends on the card drawing so someone may have two or three actions continuously and um, another commander may have only one. Uh, and then another one a little bit later. So the the drawing of the cards uh, creates unpredictability and fun. The rules are based not as a skirmish game. You base your units uh, as actually normal big battle game, and uh, a generic unit is twelve miniatures. You have um, movement rule sets that they are free. They're quite easy. They don't have you know all this strictness of many rule sets. But um, uh, again, uh, you have um, specific movement rules that other skirmish games don't. Um, you have uh, formations and um, uh, you have uh, supports, and, um, but it combines uh, a fun skirmish game, um, but it also can be used for bigger battles. Baron's Wars, I read recently, I'm quite familiar with the rules, you use D10 dice. Um, the units are skirmish alike, you, there are gaps between them, so they're more open order. Uh, there is no restriction in the units, but um, in the number of miniatures, you can have 8, 10, 12, although the size of a unit is restricted by the cohesion um, radius of 2 inches, but this can change, it's very easy to have uh, your house rules, it's very easy to house rule a couple of stuff. Again, it's based on tokens uh, and actions as Bill Hooks rules, it doesn't have card drawing, um, but um, it, it's I go, you go in a way, and um, it has um, a lot of interesting features that we're going to discuss. Blood and Crowns is another really brilliant rule set. Um, again, it has this skirmish formation, um, uh, loose formation. It has specific number of uh, troops for every unit. For example, knights have to be six, uh, infantry twelve, mounted six. So there are specific numbers. Although um, this doesn't restrict you to have bigger numbers, it's it's not restricted. It's quite easy. You play with the ten cards. You have the typical. Um, Fire lock games, card drawing, and actions depending on the type of unit you have, if you're a veteran, if you're uh, untrained, and then you perform actions. You have um, event you have event cards, you have weather cards, you have um, uh, quite an interesting uh, event and weather chart that creates some predictability and changes your game a bit, and um, is another very good rule set based on actions as well. 
So now we have the three rule sets, we know all the basics. Um, let's discuss a little bit about what I like for these rule sets. I like them all quite a lot, I would say. So the one thing that's very interesting with um, Bill Hook's rules is that uh, now that the new deluxe editions has added f four or five eras of the medieval period, the Hundred Years' War, the Wars of the Roses that was initially designed for, uh, you have, I think, uh, Scottish Wars of Independence and um, a couple of more eras I don't remember. Um, and that's something, and every era has its special rules. I like the idea of formations. I like the idea that you have deep formation, you have um, um, line formations, uh, you have hearse formation, and um, is based, as I said, in actions, uh, one action or two actions to be carried out by the specific units. Another thing I like a lot about this rule set is that the appearance of uh, fatigue. A fatigue appears during melee, so if you find a first round of melee, you, you attack and you have advantages based on the first round rules but if you go to the second round it's more difficult for you to hit if you go to the third round it's even more difficult reduce dice reduce to hit rolls and um, this is something that i enjoy in rules fatigue is important something you have to think it has pushbacks in a way it has actually uh, recoils and possible pushbacks and it has a very nice moral system um, it's quite um, not that complicated. Again, as I'm saying, it's very clever because it can be accommodated as a big battle rule. What's the difference between skirmishing and big battle rules? It's not that much. Believe me, if I could... In my opinion, the only way... Where, because people are hung up with points. If, an, if a rule set would, would uh, give you points per miniature, you could fight skirmish battles with any rule set. Believe me, because... You know, people who follow the channel know I'm a, I'm a rules expert. I've read all the rules. I know how they play. I believe me, if you give me points for Hail Caesar, I would fight the skirmish game with Hail Caesar. It's very, very easy. So, um, you have points for every miniature. And um, as I told you, it has some very interesting concepts. Um, the units uh, get uh, disarrayed, uh, disordered. Uh, they get pushed back. Um, there is... Um, there is a specific number of volleys for archers, and that's something quite innovative for Bill Hook's rules. You have, I think, six volleys for archers. You can you can shoot six times, um, and then the archers basically are only good for melee. Something quite good as well. If we go to Baron's War, Baron's War is based on actions, and uh, obviously this rule set has fatigue again. If you perform two actions, or if you perform more actions than your unit um, has, uh, as per the rules. Um, it becomes um, a wary and um, it has pushbacks. A very interesting part of the rules for Baron's War is that the pushbacks are not standard, something very innovative. Uh, you are pushed back one inch plus one inch for every hit or every hit you um, um, have. So every unit is pushed differently. I think a very innovative rule. There is a lot of customization in these rules. You've seen my flip through. Amazing number of customization and special rules. Not uh, intimidating at all. And uh, very well thought of. Uh, the author really, really studied the medieval period and added quite a lot of stuff. I like the monks uh, that uh, this period has, the Baron's War. And in general, it has some very innovative rules, movement. It has running, something that um, it's quite interesting uh, be able to run, but then you become fatigued. Um, what I would like is the possibility of uh, units not losing contact and when you're pushed back and if you have uh, the distance, if your opponent is not pushed back that much, because I told you the pushbacks are not standard, is one inch plus the hits, you'll be able to follow up. Something you can do, believe me, you can do it. It's very easy to this rule set. It doesn't affect it at all. Um, you cannot fight two units with one unit. Um, again, something that you can house rule, but it's something I would have liked to see something that uh, Blood and Crown's rules has. Uh, it has to be one-on-one. -on -one. A unit cannot be flanked in a way, not flanked. I mean, there's no flanking in, in especially in these two rules. Uh, Bill Hooks has flanking. But um, a unit could be, you know, attacked by two or pinned by an opponent and attacked uh, by, by another. Uh, this is not allowed because it's one-on-one. -on -one and, and obviously, as per the rules, all units break hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. If there is a draw, both units are pushed back one inch. A lot of innovative ideas. Uh, I enjoyed the rules. You're going to see a lot of workshops of these rules. Um, a couple of things that, not I don't like, you know, the, the, something that 
I like is missing, like continue melee and a little bit more strategic options that uh, a unit is still fighting and it can be pinned or and can be attacked from um, another unit. Something that very easily can be solved with by um, rolling uh, half dice. It's not a big issue. And what I like about these rules is that um, if you have a big unit, a bigger unit of eight or ten uh, miniatures, only the the first who are touching the opponent and the ones who are one inch from the unit, from the from the miniature that is touching, are fighting. So if you have a a, um, a unit of twelve, or twelve is big maybe, but ten, that means the first six are fighting. So you can have casualties of the first six. This is very very historically accurate. Not everybody was fighting. Some people were supporting, pushing, uh, controlling, uh, you know. But the morale will be divided. Um, by the whole unit, not by the units fighting. But again, as I'm saying, a very interesting something I've never seen in a rule set before. Um, the units were fighting, actually touching the opponent, and the ones who are exactly behind them are fighting, and maybe the other six will be just there. Um, also, there's very important, as I told you, very, very interesting special rules regarding monks, regarding leaders, a very ex exceptional rule set of. Uh, of the war horses breaking through the opponent and overcharging. Um, so war horses charge and they cannot fight again or fall back and charge again. They overcharge and they go behind the opponents like they're breaking uh, their opponent and they, you know, their, their impetuosity uh, makes them run across. A very nice rule that works very well. There are many innovative rules, as I said, uh, again, based on, on, on actions. Uh, I like the idea of the overcharge, as I told you, and um, there is uh, shield defenses that they're part of your armor defense. So you're rolling some dice uh, for armor and then you have another roll to uh, defend the and saved hits with a shield. Another thing that I like in the rules is that uh, zero, the, every dice, not every dice, but the top dice and the bottom dice of a D6 or a D10, because you do use a D6 also to charge, um, giving you advantages. So when you roll the highest dice of the required, you get a plus one dice in attack, for example. Uh, or if you are hit with a zero in a D10 dice, this is a critical hit and you can defend it only with a zero. Very innovative dice rolling. So another great set of rules. So let's go here to Blood and Crowns. Now Blood and Crowns, again, is fought with D10 dice. With D10 dice, uh, as I said before, the, the, the units are, are based like um, skirmish, but they have specific numbers. Again, you cannot, you, you're not really concerned. They can be bigger. Based on the specific uh, card deck, you can play it also with normal card decks, that um, every card has uh, different actions for different types of units. When we say veteran, trained, and trained, these actions must be performed. The maximum number of action is three for every unit, but the card may give you two. If you're trained, for example, the extra action, if you want to perform it, you have to get fatigued. And slowly, slowly, with more fatigue, you have negative modifiers when you reach uh, the position of um, the breaking, the shaking position, you are pushed back. Uh, there is a lot of pushbacks and follow-ups. There is no breaking of uh, contact. The, your opponents, most of the time, have the option to follow. Um, all the units are fighting, in different with the Baron's War, um, and there is um, quite a lot, again, of interesting rules, uh, special rules of bracing, special rules for pike, special rules for harness, full harness, special rules for double-handed weapons. Um, all these rules, uh, there is quite a lot of interesting and um, um, innovative uh, army lists uh, from the Scottish Wars of Independence up to the Hundred Years' War. I think they have also Wars of the Roses, if I'm not mistaken. Um, again, special rules that play an important role um, during uh, the battle, as it's in the Baron Wars. And um, again, a rule said I have a lot of stuff, as I have with Bill Hooks, uh, on the channel that you can find more details. What I like about Blood and Crowns is the very, very innovative and interesting weather changes and events and wind changes that um, play an important role if you draw a specific card, if you draw a joker. And in general, um, one of the best, again, uh, rule sets I've ever played. Now you will tell me, um, 
you're a big battle game, why, how you enjoy these games. I really enjoy them because, first of all, I make them bigger. I, make, I put many, many units. Um, I like the way the skirmish units look. I like the idea sometimes these uh, units are, are deciding to go close order or shield wall and they, they become actually as, as a unit of big battle rules. And I like a lot the customization and the special rules that all the three rules that have, but especially Baron Wars and afterwards Blood and Crowns have a lot of innovative rules, a lot of special rules that you can add to your units that spice up the game. What, which one I would choose? It's very difficult. Uh, rules is in a quiet taste. And um, I know that Bill Hooks is very popular. I know that Baron Wars is, is as well. And Blood and Crowns that uh, was released recently is becoming very popular as well. It's obviously in a quiet taste. You need to go to the details to see what you like and, um, um, you know, to and you make your decision. And you can find a lot of uh, information about the rules and Baron Wars will start battle reports when the armies are completed but especially for Blood and Crowns and the Bill Hooks you can find a lot of videos on the channel. So this is um, a very quick overview of uh, the three rule sets. Uh, three rules I enjoy uh, a lot, uh, very different from each other although I would say Baron's Wars and Blood and Crowns are they have a lot of differences, but they all have the same, you know, ideas. Um, Bill Hooks is a bit different. Uh, again, uh, it's a skirmish game, but you can play big battles. Um, I like the variety of seas of eras that uh, are given to Bill Hooks with special rules. Something um, I believe Blood and Crowns are thinking of doing, and also I heard Baron's Wars are thinking of uh, venturing in um, uh, Hundred Years War era in the future. And I really, really tell you the truth. I have to. Um, um, swallow my words i'm enjoying skirmish games i'm not playing the typical skirmish games or you know two three miniatures four miniatures and three four units uh, my last blood and crowns game had around 100 miniatures and it was quite fun but i like the freedom of the, of the of the skirmish game i like the freedom of the movement and of not you know counting every single inch i like um the idea that um, these skirmish games are becoming more interesting, more detailed, um, are becoming more historically accurate than just a skirmish game. All these guys uh, are thinking about the era, the advantages and disadvantages, the armor, the weapons, the the pain and the and the destruction they inflicted. It's not a it's it's not based. It's these are not rule sets that have been designed to be rule sets. These are rule sets, skirmish rule sets. Excuse me. These are rule sets who have been designed to um, follow as much as they can accuracy of an era and. Um, uh, th at the same time, uh, uh, people being able to play with a few miniatures if they don't have space or don't have uh, the, the, the funds or if they don't like big games. But at the same time, believe me, they accommodate big battles and um, they can play. You can play all really easily with smaller, with smaller numbers or bigger numbers. And uh, it's something I can prove and you can see from my videos. And I will show it to you also when I start Baron's War. So I hope I gave you an overview of the three rule sets. Um, I hope um, you uh, will follow the channel when we start the Baron's War season, hopefully next month when we finish the armies and have more time. It's a little bit of work now after Christmas coming back. Uh, the work is a little bit more hectic. Um, as I said, Bill Hooks, workshops, interviews with the author, uh, flick-throughs, uh, uh, Blood and Crowns games, interviews with the author and um, Philo's game co-owner, um, a lot of flick-through, a lot of battle reports, a lot of mechanics so you can understand the rules. The same will happen with Baron's Wars. Please, if you're interested, go have a look, ask questions. I have no problem answering them. You know, I'm answering on everybody on the channel and I will help you uh, make a decision. All three rules, excellent. All three rule sets, really enjoyable. And uh, all three rule sets have their innovative ideas. And I have to say, all three rule sets, specifically the ones who have uh, the card drawing sequence and the action sequence are really, really, I would say, uh, solo friendly. So this is for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope I enlightened you a bit. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the support for the channel. Um, thank you so much for watching. And bye-bye, uh, have a great remaining week.